Welcome to the Keto Edge Summit, where we are dispelling the myths, helping you overcome the hurdles, and empowering you to improve your brain and your body through the ketogenic lifestyle. I'm your host, Dr. David Jockers, and I'm here with a good friend of mine, Dr. Jay Davidson. And Dr. Jay is really a world expert when it comes to chronic infections, these microbes that literally can destroy our body from the inside out. Things like Lyme disease, parasites, Dr. J has been working with people literally all over the world, helping them overcome these things. He's also put on a lot of great online programs, giving people practical advice and things that they can do. So we're gonna jump into this topic in detail. And so Jay, it's just so so excited to have you on. And yeah. why don't you share with our audience really how you got involved in this? I know your background is as a chiropractor, right? Yep. And that's how we originally met when we were students. Exactly, yeah. But your world really <laughs> took a big turn you know, with your wife. And so I'd love for you to share Share that. Yeah, well, it, it, it's amazing to think about how far back we met. Actually, yes. when you, now that you say that, but yeah, it was it was all because of my wife's story, yeah. and I think that's probably even so much of the listener that's listening right now. It's like you get engaged on a certain topic. Mm because of it's a family member or it's yourself having these struggles or something happens in your life and and that's what happened on my side you know I ran a very successful chiropractic office helping a lot of people you know saw over 600 visits myself yeah. a week you know the average care is like 90 you know to try to put that into perspective a little bit and I had no reason to do anything but that you know yeah. really good a couple radio shows really educating about health and wellness and then my daughter was born uh, in 2012, uh, July 4th, actually. It was on my wife's 30th birthday, July 4th. So they're both firecracker babies. But it was at that point that my wife's health just tanked. And like time stopped because it was like, okay, nothing matters other than her getting well. And one of the first things that came up in the mind when she crashed was like, yeah. Could it be Lyme disease? Because she had had it when she was seven years old. Mm. And she had, you know, my daughter on her 30th birthday, so it was 23 years later. But from when she was seven, she got sick. They gave her some medication, caused brain encephalitis, which is basically brain swelling. And when the brain swelling happened, she was coma, coma for six weeks. And it was in that process that they figured out it was Lyme, which is way back. And then health issues just continued, you know, sinuses scraped, had to pull out of the Junior Olympics for swimming because of that, heart issues, so she, they, a couple surgeries where they literally went up through the thigh to do ablations on her heart when she was 18 years old. And so she had all that history, and when we met, she was doing pretty good. And it was pretty much like, don't rock the boat. Yeah. Like, I'm sick of being the, the guinea pig, don't test mm -hmm. stuff, like I'm just, so she, you know, we just went by, like she just kind of got by. But then when my daughter was born, what, you know, I feel guilty even thinking or even speaking this, but at the time I was like, gosh, is this a curse? Like, yeah. you know, like my wife is literally, it was two months in, my wife had to stop breastfeeding. Like she, she couldn't even take care of herself, let alone body produce anything for my daughter. As soon as she stopped breastfeeding, my daughter like immediately stopped crying. And I mm -hmm. knew like how many probably stress hormones from her we're going right into yeah. you know my daughter and I mean she was forced basically into fasting which we can talk more about yeah. too as part of her healing and recovery but it was just like what do we have to do to get her well mm -hmm. and basically found out it was Lyme disease that went massively acute and heavy metal toxicity those were the mm -hmm. two big pieces to her puzzle but it's funny just I didn't even think about this until right now during this interview, but fasting was such an intricate part yeah. to help turn the corner from her. I mean, I can still picture it. Uh, the house in Wisconsin at the time that we were living, her laying next to me and I'm just not even wanting to go to bed because I'm like, if I go to bed, is she even going to wake up alive next to me? You know, yeah. and it, you know, it's emotional thinking about that, but it's through all that, that, that shifted our path and quote unquote, you know, my path to all of a sudden now be like a Lyme disease expert yeah. when I had no intention of ever doing that. And, you know, it's, it's so often our story becomes our specialty. Yeah, absolutely. And so you started down this path to really understanding more about Lyme after the diagnosis. And what can you share about 
things like Lyme disease and what, what kind of infections are you seeing to be most common in the, the people that you've been working with? Yeah, Lyme, Lyme is huge. I mean, yeah. the CDC in 2013 basically said that 300, well, they say 30,000 people are, you know, getting Lyme each year. But we think our estimate is way under, so we yeah. think it's at least thirty th or three hundred thousand people, mm -hmm. and then some experts in the Lyme world think that that number is even ten x smaller, so it's probably three million people. And I mean, Lyme disease is a huge piece of the puzzle. There's different viruses like Cytomegalia virus, a yeah. bunch of different herpes type viruses. Um, Epstein Barr is a massive issue. Babesia, which is typically a co-infection of yeah. Lyme disease, actually a parasite, so it'd be the parasite realm. There's different right. bacteria, like Bartonella is a really big issue. Mm -hmm. Classic for people that get like calf cramps, sore feet, yeah. you know, when they stand up in the morning, um, you know, pain, hips, migraines, uh, you know, a lot of neurologic stuff is Bartonella too. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. And ultimately, what are some of the major symptoms that people have that might clue them in that they may be dealing with one of these types of infections? It's a, <clears throat> it's a tough question because Lyme is usually, and I'll just say Lyme. When I say Lyme, I, I really want to say Lyme and the other bugs associated, but yeah. for you know simplistic sake, we'll just say Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. But when we're looking at Lyme disease, it's oftentimes like we ruled everything else out now let's check it. Oh yeah, it kind of yeah. looks like it is Lyme. Mm -hmm. Like that's the general progression. And it's it's a little disheartening to know that there's over 150 different symptoms you can have for Lyme disease. Yeah. And everybody's presentation can be different. So it's like, okay, well, there's not like one thing. But I mean, if anybody classically has ever been bit by a tick, something to rule out. If you've ever had a bullseye rash, I mean, these are telltale signs. Yeah. But, but only about 30% of people that have Lyme disease actually ever get a rash. Yeah. So just because you never had a rash doesn't mean like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, I'm mm -hmm. free of it. It's like, no, it's a lot bigger issue. Um, I really believe pain that migrates, so like arthritis, moving yeah. arthritis, right? It's a shoulder one day, yeah. next day it's my knee, next in the, in the other area is fine, that was painful right. the day before. That's a classic sign mm -hmm. of Lyme in its category. Um, some of the co-infections, oh, and uh, costochondritis. So, okay, soreness right there along the sternum. Yep, yep, right where the yeah. ribs come to the sternum or the breastbone mm -hmm. there. If you press on there, and it's one, it's not like, oh yeah, it's a little tender. It's like you press on there, it's like, oh, that's mm. that's a pretty telltale sign. Uh, right AC, so the um, right kind of from the tip of the shoulder in the right AC joint. If you've had an injury to it, obviously it could be the injury. Yeah. But if you have right shoulder problems, there's no injury that could potentially be assigned to physical yeah. exam wise. But, um, you know, when you're looking down the list, like Babesia, which is a pretty common infection, a parasite, yeah. night sweats is a big thing. Mm. They call it another symptom they call is air hunger. But basically what that means, you, just f you feel like you can't get a big breath. Mm. Like it's very shallow breathing. Like I just can't, I can't, can't breathe you know yeah. so if you have like those symptoms those can be that infection so each quote-unquote like bug or infection can have their different signs yeah you know if somebody's prone to like pneumonia or they've had that before that could be a mycoplasm mycoplasm mm -hmm. pneumonia is like walking pneumonia is a common sign of that um, you know there's many many yeah keys depending on what bug pathogen we're actually looking at right I find that so interesting that sometimes they have these random symptoms is there any research has Obviously, the migrating, I've learned that as well, the migrating inflammation to different joints. Is there any research on like why that would be? It, yeah, it all comes back to the bug. Yeah. So if you think about the bug, Lyme disease, it's basically a spiral-shaped mm. bacteria. Okay. So it's a spirochete, you know, yes. spiral shape. So spiral bacteria, they don't like to just randomly float around the bloodstream. They're drilling. So if they're drilling, they're drilling into muscles, they're drilling into mm -hmm. joints, I see. you know, they're going into organs and yeah. I mean, import, obviously all the organs are important, but important yeah. organs, you know? So that's oftentimes like when we run a blood test, like a yeah. standard test for Lyme, they're so inaccurate and they're a waste yeah. of money. And it's almost like you're better off not running it because you don't want to make any assumptions about it. Yeah. Cause it's basically a 40 to 60% error rate. Right. So you almost be better off doing a coin flip than running the standard test. Yes. And I believe a lot of it is simply because we're looking at blood work and the target organ isn't Lyme. Right. Now if it's yeah. angered and it's stirred up, 
like it was with my wife after she was born mm -hmm. or after my daughter was born, after my wife gave birth. I mean, that's more likely a time you can catch it easier. Yeah. But a lot of times it's, it's, it's in deep, yeah. you know, the body. What are some better ways to test it? You know, so. so Lyme disease yeah. is a clinical diagnosis, yeah. so it's important to listen because I think in our society... It's not like a definitive test necessarily, yeah. although there is, but you can't just base it off of like yeah. Western blot. Yeah. yeah, so at the time when um, we ran a test after my uh, daughter was born, mm -hmm. we ran what's called the iSpot Lyme test yeah. from Pharmacin Labs, okay. which has now been actually pulled off the market. Mm. But at the time, it was really accurate. And it not only gave you like a positive or negative, but it gave you a scale. And with her scale, it was actually in the acute phase. And that was mm. like, you know, I was like, okay, we know, we know at least part of the issues, but there's also all this emotion of like, crap, yes. you know, she's dealt with this for 20 some years. like. Right. Is this ever going to end? Um, so that was that was a good test at the time, but then they had some laboratory problems, so I stopped recommending that. Uh, and then shortly after, now they don't actually have the test available anymore. I don't think they got their like laboratory, you know, license review yeah. or whatever, like renewed. Um, but right now, my favorite is DNA connections, okay. and connections yeah. at the end is X. Um, X-I-O-N-S at the end of connections, but it's a Lyme urine panel. So it's not checking the blood, it's yeah. checking the urine, but there's certain things that we can do, like we could have you go get a massage, yeah. or we could have you be really active and, and somewhat stress the body out. Yeah. And then we can collect the urine right after. You get those metabolites. To see if there's any bugs coming out of that. Yeah. So you can look at Lyme, you can look at co-infections like Bartonella, Babesia, or Lichia, you know, all, a lot of different co-infections too. And if it picks it up, I'm like, yeah, that's definitely shows that it's there. Yeah. If it's negative, it's still not 100%. Okay. So when we look at Lyme, it's a clinical diagnosis. And clinical just means like doctors got to use their brains, you know? Yeah, okay. um, so if you've got a, a, a tick bite with a bullseye rash, like that's Lyme. Yeah. Do you need a test to confirm that? No. Yeah. Can you run one? Yeah. So I like looking at history, examination, um, the testing category, what's been previously run, because there's a lot, you know, like things will come up equivocal, you know, like we're not really sure if it's negative or positive. We can run, you know, DNA connections or newer tests. And then also, um, you know, there's a whole like energetic side. There's like the energetic muscle testing. There's like machines that do that. Yeah. And I like to, you know, can we look at at least two out of the four? If we can find two things within those four categories that say, yeah, it kind of looks like Lyme for you, Dr. Jockers, then I'm comfortable as a clinician saying, yeah, Lyme is a piece to the puzzle. Mm, but yeah. it's very important to know piece to the puzzle. Yeah. Because as soon as you hear Lyme, it's real easy to be like, boom, tunnel vision, and it's all about that. Right. But in order for somebody to get into the predicament of Lyme disease, it's not just the bacteria. There's yeah. always other factors. Yeah, absolutely. And that really takes us into the next question I had is, all of us are exposed, we're exposed to parasites, we're exposed to, you know, all different types of pathogenic organisms, including Lyme, yep. but some people develop the chronic infection, other people, their body fights it off. And so what's the difference there? Yeah, well, it, it, it kind of comes back to this theory, the whole, you know, Louis Pasteur versus, yeah. you know, Bouchon, right. uh, the French guy that, you know, Louis Pasteur with the germ theory said it's the bug that makes us sick and Bouchon's like, no, I mean, that's a factor, but it's the mm -hmm. environment or the terrain, yeah. which is really our body. Right. And that's how, you know, we can have, you can, I can have a client where they have three other family members in the house. They're all in the same environment. They're all around each other. And only one person's sick, yeah. quote unquote, with symptoms. It's like, because their body is handling it and one person's isn't. So it's really about us and our terrain. Right. And so I love getting out of the whole, let's, let's battle Lyme, let's yeah. kill it. Cause it's like, do we really need a battle internally? Mm. What about if we looked at our body and said, man, God made a, an amazing yeah. machine, amazing, you know, organism. How can I support that? Yeah. That's what I love about ketosis is yeah. it's a way you can just support the body right. to improve function. So, and then I always love to avoid actually the label term too, because it's like, it's too easy to become like, oh, I am Lyme or I am, you yeah, know, this kid. Exactly. Yes. And it's like, you know, who cares? As long as we, as long as we know where we need to progress mm -hmm. protocol wise, quote unquote treatment and improve the body, you're going to get well. We don't necessarily yeah. need to label it, but 
it's all about what else is going on. So there's there's people in the Lyme world that believe it's not really even the bug. It's really more emotional traumas mm -hmm. and stressors. Yeah. Um, like my good friend uh, Trina Hammock says it's really a conflict resolution. So in other words, if you know you if you're you know, you're growing up and all of a sudden your dad left and you're six years old just abruptly and then you reunited with him, you know, when you were 20 years old, like 14 years later, that conflict resolution is something that can then trigger Lyme disease. Yeah. So, and, and it makes me think, okay, well, a lot of us actually have the bug already in us. Mm -hmm. So what are those things that actually trigger it? Yeah. And I do believe emotional trauma can be a big category. Mm -hmm. I think mold. Yes. I mean, explosion. we're in Florida right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for this interview, mold, I think, is one of the biggest triggers, mm -hmm. personally, of, you know, really bringing out Lyme. Um, I believe toxicity, you know, yeah. glyphosates in rainwater. Yeah. Heavy, I mean, they're, they're, they're doing geoengineering of aluminum in the sky. Like, right. we, we are surrounded by toxins, and it, at some point, it kind of hits that tipping point where it's like the immune system just gets knocked down. Yeah. And when it gets knocked down, whatever's pathogenic in our body has an opportunity to really take hold. Right, right. So all of these things in general, they're opportunistic. And so we've got to build a level yeah. of resiliency. And if we can't adapt and be resilient to the stressors we're under, whether it's the chemical stressors, the mental, emotional, physical stressors, car accidents, things like that, yep. then we're going to be overwhelmed. And then ultimately we're going to end up with symptoms and we're going to have oftentimes chronic infections that are that are destroying our body. And that's pretty much what you're saying there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I go back to my wife after childbirth of having... Which, which is a physical stress, incredible boom. physical stress. Physical yes. trauma. We right? don't think about it because we're like, well, people always give birth. Yeah. But at the same time, that's an incredible physical stress. And it's so, a trauma. Yes. Yep. And, and that's why I, f I see so many times, too... Uh, moms that have had kids and then, you know, like, okay, all of a sudden they're autoimmune, like autoimmune issues show up they never had, all right? Yeah. Hashimoto's, all these things. But then you also see such a big issue in the female population after birth of pelvic pain, pelvic yeah. issues. Right. And I believe that through the birth labor process, mm -hmm. that it's physical trauma, tissues are, I mean, they're being stressed, they're being damaged, they're Absolutely. changing, you know, for someone that hasn't given birth. And that a, that trauma allows lower immune system activity yes. in the area, so the bugs like that. Yes. And we actually found, like, my wife had massive pelvic issues mm -hmm. and pain. She couldn't even walk up the stairs. Yeah. It's like she's not healing. Like, right. Not natural childbirth. It was long. It was like 25 hours, yeah. but natural, you know. And figured out that actually parasites love the pelvic region. Oh, wow. So if you look at, like, fibroids yeah. um, or ovarian cysts, mm -hmm. I mean classically like parasite type issues hmm. and then of course like in the vaginal area you can definitely have different bacteria and things that can kind of yeah. take over and it's usually like a colony but i mean if you have symptoms like that those could also be signs too like okay i've, I've probably got some type of chronic infection that i need to deal with yeah that's that's so interesting i always i always tell women childbirth is like you know a fee, in a sense a female super bowl it's like the biggest activity they're ever going to get you know they're ever going to have is that birth of that child and then they don't get you know an off season it's like <laughs> immediately they got to take care of the kids my it's... wife's position she had two you know all of a sudden so there's no off season in fact you're in season yeah. after the childbirth well it's, yeah it's like you're on triple overtime yes. like and, and, yeah, exactly. And for the moms listening, <laughs> that's a good point. Like it's two guys, that, yes. you know. So take that with a grain of salt. But right. I mean, once my daughter was born, I'm like my level of respect for moms. Oh yeah. I was, boom through the Absolutely. roof. What do you need? I exactly. you know. So just amazing. And that's a real susceptible time to developing some yep. sort of an infection at that period of time, right? And so and less likely to to protect from it because yeah. There's no time to sleep. Right. You're feeding every couple hours. Exactly. Body is really hard to recover. Yep. Let alone like take care of this new little being that's in the world. Yes. Now your body's got to recover, and that's just when things can take take the hold on you. Yeah, without a doubt. So very, very susceptible, vulnerable time, and so you're seeing that often. I know I see that as a, as a time when you know these infections can gain an upper hand. And so what are some of the things that your wife did in her journey and that you're working with people to help them overcome? Let's talk about like lifestyle things first. Right? Yeah. Well, so maybe going back to like the crisis situation, yeah. you know, uh, my daughter was born two months in was pretty much the rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And my wife just got allergic 
to everything. Mm. Piece of lettuce, throat would swell up. Anything but water, and then we figured out bone broth, the yeah. traditional homemade bone broth, right. she was fine with. Mm. So she bone broth fasted yeah. with water, mm -hmm. forced, I mean forced. Yeah. Um, for like 17 days yeah, and she dropped she'd gained like 50 pounds She's yeah. pretty small small gal, but gained 50 pounds in the pregnancy and lost most of it mm -hmm. like yeah. within a month Which yeah. is not recommended of course, yeah. but um, So this was even before I knew about Ketosis ketogenic right getting your body in nutritional ketosis, but I know in that whole time period That's what was happening like her her body was forced to go into this fasting state where it's just bone broth, just getting the collagen, yeah. the minerals, and some fats, yeah. and let her body recover. Like, mm -hmm. let's pull the sugar out, let's mm -hmm. downregulate inflammation, let's heal the gut. And I think her body was just so inflamed, she was so reactive to everything, yeah. that this was a huge savior thing for her. Mm -hmm. And it was from that time that I was like, wait a minute, okay, so, and this is how I was thinking clinically, up. if we've got somebody that's literally bed bound, or tried everything, or reacts to everything, or in a crisis situation like my wife, and it works for them, anybody in a little bit better scenario should work for them. Yeah. So we wanna test things out on like the people that are always, okay, I give you something, it's the opposite result. We wanna figure out what works for you, because if that works for you, we, we can extrapolate to the rest of the population that's not in that crisis, what's gonna help them the fastest. And that's what I feel like I, clinician, clinically you ran into. So fasting I think is really big. And I'm a huge fan from a diet food standpoint. And I know that's always like such a controversial topic, mm -hmm. you know, because we're all on our own journeys. We've got people that are the, the raw foodists or the macrobiotic vegetarian vegan to the paleo to the, you know, uh, ketosis is, mm -hmm. I feel like it's got such important power within that. Um, and you've got, it's almost like we kind of walk a spectrum in our life where, you know, yeah. depends on where we're at is what we, what we're open to. But I, I love to hear your feedback, but I feel like anytime you comment about diet, it's real easy for people. If it's not within their limit, yeah. boom, they're like, oh, I can't believe that you, oh, yeah. you know, cause we get so worked up about it. It's very, it. very polarizing. Yeah. You know? I think it's, we, we all want to be affirmed based on the decisions we're making and the thought process that, so we, it, it all becomes about, you know, us and our own level of affirmation. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, ultimately you want to, as clinicians, right? We want to give people strategies that are going to work for them. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, with your wife doing the fasting, which is really what all of our ancestors did because they didn't have food, right? Or they did it culturally or religiously. Yep. Clearly, we know when we fast, we downregulate inflammation. We actually create epigenetic changes that, you know, basically will take genes that are expressing a, a state of chronic disease and um, and shut those down and switch on new genes that are going to help our body to, to rebuild, to strengthen the immune system. We're going to get the ketone production, so we're going to actually feel satiated. Um, we're not going to necessarily be starving. Our body's actually going to preserve as much of the lean body tissue as possible because it wants to survive. Yep. Um, and so we get all of these powerful changes, but of course, you know, it's countercultural. Okay. Number one, and, and you know, number two is especially with your wife, how how thin and lean she is. You naturally think, well, a lean person can't do this. They're going to starve to death. Yep. I'm going to dwindle into nothing. Right. right? Yeah. It's like, oh, if you're overweight, yeah, go ahead. Because you got all kinds of extra stuff. But it, yes. it doesn't matter if you're under or overweight. When you do the right things, your body goes to the ideal yes. body weight. <clears throat> that's and right. I think that's an important focus. Yeah, it's and, all about homeostasis, right? Yeah. The body has this incredible drive for balance, stability, and it wants to thrive. It's trying to do the best it can. Yep. Yep. So when I look at, I guess, food and diet mm -hmm. right now, where I'm at in my journey yeah. is I love the idea of rotating food, like yeah. the type of foods. Yeah. And I like rotating the timing. Mm. I think if we vary, vary those two factors, yeah. we can get the best results. Because ultimately, what is the goal of going on a diet? What is the goal of actually like listening to all these amazing mm -hmm. interviews on the Keto Edge Summit? Yeah. It's like you, you want, I had um, Dr. Tina Moore when I interviewed her a couple years back, she had said this. She's like, you're really just trying to make yourself tougher to kill, yeah. you know? So if there's like an apocalypse or something in it, and right away I was like, what? But the more I thought about it, I'm like, that, that, that's why we do what we do. Yeah. We want, 
We want to train our body to adapt. Yes. So that if we're exposed to some type of bug mm -hmm. that's nasty, yeah. or we have some type of emotional trauma or physical trauma, that our bodies can adapt in that situation. And if we eat the same way, the same timing, all the time, we're losing the whole ability to make our body adapt. Yeah. So I love fasting where you do, you know, you take a few days and fast, or you yeah. just do daily intermittent fast, and you change it up because that's changing the timing. Right. I love the idea of, I mean, if you just look at how we naturally ate before, all of a sudden we had, you know, food from all over the world mm -hmm. at all times of year. Like you eat, you eat seasonal, right? Yeah. So it's not as if we have to just eat seasonal per se, but I like the idea of changing it up. You know, when we're, when we're getting bombarded with sunshine in the summertime or we're, you know, in Florida and we're, you know, it's yeah. the heat in summer, our mitochondria can handle sugar so much better. Yeah. But when it's winter time and you're pounding fruits, and you know, quote unquote, the good, sh the good foods, but they have sugar in them. Mm -hmm. Our bodies are less likely to be able to adapt to that sugar yeah. because of the environment. So I think we take in the fact, like where we're at in our life, what's our stress level geographically, mm -hmm. what's all going on. And if we just work on varying that up, I think that allows our body to create this amazing ability to constantly yeah. be able to adapt. So no matter what's thrown at you, you can handle it, you know? Yeah, this idea of diet variation. I know we interviewed Dr. Pompa, Dan mm. Pompa, and he really talked a lot about that, that diet variation and how actually food can be kind of this subtle stressor on our body and utilizing it as like a low level stressor to kind of push us forward with our adaptation and our ability to yep. be more resilient to the stresses in life. You know, in the Keto Edge Summer, we're talking about empowering you to improve your brain and your body. And it's like you talked about, it's all about resiliency and making making it to where our body is tougher to kill, right? And we look at infections, you know, and so we know that bacteria, viruses, um, yeast, all of these types of things, Lyme, I mean, all this stuff, these microorganisms, their job is to break down decaying matter. Our job is to not be decaying matter. <laughs> it's to be lively, thriving, vibrantly that. alive matter, yeah. right? And then yeah. we're able to keep these things in check. Right. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yep. And that's, I mean, even kind of swinging it back to the Lyme side of it, like I'd say the top four things that I see clinically, Lyme in the co-infection category would be one. I would say mold issues would be another yeah. one. Toxicity and especially heavy metals mm. and then parasites. Yeah. And typically like the clients that work with us, it's, they have a multiple of these. Right. So for the people, the, for the person that, okay, I got a tick and I get a bullseye, I took an antibiotic and I'm fine, I've never had an issue, mm -hmm. it was probably just a bacterial type issue. Yeah. But for the vast majority of people when they do that and they hit a wall and they're like, I just, I felt good for a little bit but now I'm crashing, it's because there's other pieces. Yeah, the body's worn down. And, and, and I, I, I encourage you to think about where you're at right now in your own health journey and say, okay, what, so, because we always like to work on what we're good at, right? Yeah. Like if we're good at cooking and diet, then we just want to know more about it. But it's like, well, what about is your home environment safe air and water quality? You know, so there's no mold. Is, have I done any parasite cleansing before? Have I done any true mm -hmm. detoxification actually get the stuff out of me? Yeah. And it's in those maybe not comfortable areas because you haven't explored that where all the breakthroughs usually happen. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, talking about lifestyle, you know, we've talked about obviously diet, We've talked about just, I mean, sleep, how, how critical that is, right? So these are foundational things we want to be doing. Let's talk about some maybe advanced therapies or supplements. Let's talk about supplements first. Yeah, well, maybe what would be, thinking from a supplement standpoint, yeah. you know, I, I like to, from a clinical side, I always put things together in my head of, okay, if I was meeting with you, mm -hmm. I would want to know, like, like, let's put all the chips on the table. Let's figure out, okay, what are the, source or sources, right? Is there mold? Is there parasites? Is there toxicity? Is there Lyme or co-infections? You know, is there mental, emotional trauma? Yeah. I mean, that's a big one too. Uh, is there gut issues? How, you know, how's the energy, the adrenals, you know, what's your sleep quality? Like, look at all that. And then it's almost like, I like to think of supplements as phases. Yeah. So if the first phase, and, and this is probably one of the biggest things that we can focus on, especially if we want to teach our body to adapt keto wise, yeah. like keto adapt is drainage. Mm. So drainage is 
often, so often, one of those first phases I have yeah. somebody go through. Parasites, which actually can clog up drainage pathways, would be second kind of phase typically. And then we can move into more detoxification and then kind of a mop up cleanup of the smaller bugs like Lyme, Epstein Barr, you know, these other co infections. So I like to think of it in phases. Uh, and obviously, if there's mold, I mean, we need to remove the source immediately first. Because yeah. if you ever hit a wall, you're like, I'm reacting, it's yeah. causing me the opposite reaction. I, I, I did the protocol exactly, felt good for a week, and then it crashed. Yeah. Environment, yes. mold, consider mold. Yeah. So from a from a supplement standpoint, herbs. I'm I love drainage because I. It's, it's kind of a blanket statement here, but I feel yeah. like Dr. Jockers that if you focus on drainage, you mm -hmm. can only support the body better. Yeah. So yeah. like we're, you know, in in Florida at a conference. Yeah. I usually don't sleep as much as I normally would because there's yeah. so much going on, mm -hmm. so many people to, you know, Absolutely. catch up with, interact yeah. with. So I specifically take drainers for lymphatic and brain drainage. Because when you sleep, that's when your brain drains. Right. So if you don't get optimal sleep, your brain's not fully yeah. draining. So how, from a supplement herb standpoint, can we support that? Mm. Right. Like coffee enemas are great to help with drainage, yeah. but I'm not bringing my coffee enema bucket sure. kit to yeah. a hotel yeah. and traveling. You know, when like I have a five and a half year old, my wife, my brother, and his girl. Like it's five of us. Like we only have so much room, you know, for bags <laughs> and stuff. So you kind of pick and choose. Yeah. So I like to look at it as not really like everybody needs this or everybody needs that. Mm -hmm. But I like to look at more in phases. But now that being said, there's certain things like iodine, magnesium, where I, w I, I don't even know if I'd look at them as a supplement, more of just like a lifestyle because mm -hmm. there's deficiency with it. Like yeah. ketosis, right? Like a, 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 a keto or a ketone body. Yeah. I think of that as more almost a food than even like a supplement, you yeah. know? Yeah. But that's just how I process things. Yeah, absolutely. So talking about drainage, what are some of the best compounds that are going to help us to drain? Yeah, so I love I love doing, um, you know, I guess if you could call it procedures, kind of sounds weird, but yeah. things at home that don't really cost a lot of money. Yeah. So coffee enemas, top of the list. Right. Because when you do a coffee enema, not only, people always think about it, it's like clearing the colon, right? So I'm detoxing. What happens is when you do a coffee enema, it goes right to the liver. And in the liver, it increases glutathione, which helps detox. Yeah. And it's an antioxidant, so it's mm -hmm. anti-aging um, for those people that like, like that side of it as well, too. But it forces the liver bile duct to purge. Right. And it's in stagnation. Yeah. So if you just remember this, if you won't write anything down for this interview, stagnation mm -hmm. is where chronic infection thrives. Totally. So constipation. Right, people were dehydrated. Yep. Right, so the, some of these small hanging fruit just hydrating your body really, really well to help flush out all the systems. Yep. Right, taking it to another level. Coffee enemas. Yeah. Right? So Get things moving. And this is principle, right? Yeah. So exercise is movement. Motion yeah. is life. Right. Sleep, even though you're quote unquote stagnant, that's actually when your brain drains. So that's yeah. a piece to keeping movement. Yes. Supplement herb wise, we can focus on drainage organs, like you said, the colon, yeah. the lymphatic system, mm -hmm. the kidneys, the liver yes. bile duct. I think the liver bile duct is like the really center important. focus. Yeah. Because yeah. if that's clogged, automatically your body lymphatic's clogged because it relies on the liver bile duct. Mm. And if the lip if the body lymphatic is clogged, automatically your brain drainage to your lymph is clogged. Gotcha. which they, they call the glymphatic, yeah. glial cell lymphatic put together, brain drainage. So if we focus on opening that liver bile duct up right away, mm -hmm. typically that makes any protocol, any treatment easier to tolerate yeah. or better. Usually makes switching diets and foods people right. less sensitive because you're, you got mm, motion. That's good. What are some symptoms that somebody might have this liver bile duct stagnation? <laughs> Well, we can, um, there's some really cool things you can actually look at in the face, like yeah. what we would call like face diagnosis, yeah, if you will. Mapping. Yeah, mapping. yeah, yeah, yep, yep, face mapping. So like if you get lines between your eyebrows, so if you have like two lines or a center line, that's oftentimes liver stress, chronic yeah. liver stress. Um, I mean, you can look at the eyebrows. If the eyebrows are really thick and robust, I mean, that's typically like people have good strong bones if they start really thinning then we're looking at blood sugar issues if the outer thirds thinning we're looking at thyroid but I love looking at the eyes mm. so if you see puffiness under the eyes like yeah. bags you want to think drainage you want to think kidneys okay. you want to think lymph yeah if you see purple 
dark purple underneath the eyes. This is something I struck. I had the worst mm. dark purple circles yeah. growing up. Food allergies, mm. parasites. Okay. Number one yeah. thing is parasites for that. And you can just look like somebody's eyes yeah. and know, okay, is that like, like you can see the luster shine so, with so you. So you're looking at me right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you, you, when you're looking, looking at the face, you really want to analyze it. If you have vertical lines like above that lip, yeah. And you're not a smoker, like the smoker lines, right. para chronic parasite issues. Okay. If you have a big, like... And also if you saw them on the fingernail too, right? Vertical ridges. Yeah, vertical ridges. I usually think of that as digestive issues. Okay. Yeah. But a lot of times it's parasites. Related to yep. infection, yep. 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 If you've got the white spots on your fingernails, I had those for years. Yeah. And I took zinc. Mm. I took selenium. I took everything I thought. And they never went away. And then as soon as I cleansed parasites... Also, I'm looking at my fingernails. I'm like, I don't have those anymore. Because now you're absorbing the zinc. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the parasites mm -hmm. love to affect B6 and zinc, the yeah. whole pyrrole disorder, right. where they say it's genetic. It's all parasite. Yeah. Um, let's see. For the face, so lower lip, if it's puffy, mm -hmm. and assuming you didn't have Botox, uh, chronic constipation. So that can be a mm -hmm. drainage sign. You know. Okay. I mean, there's so many. Yeah. Like, it's so cool. You can just. And it's not like judging people, but it's the body's giving you signals, yeah, right? Absolutely. Or if you have like the. The horizontal lines below your eyeball yep. here, kind of like where your quote unquote eye bags would be, but like horizontal lines, that's usually adrenal fatigue. Yeah. Um, you know, creases in the ear, typically cardiovascular risk factors. I mean, it's, there's so many cool things that we can yeah. know about. Um, so face mapping, obviously, something people can do, mm -hmm. um, and, and they can find that. Do you have any, any information on your website on that? Uh, we, yeah, I've got a, I've got a module in our yeah. um, like at home, you know, self That's guided right. that goes right. through more of that. But yeah. um, I also actually have an article on face mapping, so you can look that. Oh up. yeah, you can find out more information on that just from drjockers.com, which will help. Definitely. Um, but so yeah, we're talking about symptoms that people can have. Now let's get back to that liver bile duct because you know when you're somebody's going on a higher fat when they're reducing the carbs, raising up the fats, right? Like we teach in a ketogenic lifestyle. One issue they can have because they got to produce more bile, and if that bile duct yep. is stagnant, they could have some issues there, right? Bingo. And so, what are some things people can do to open that up? Yeah, well, maybe we should go a little bit in the anatomy. Yeah. Because I see, you know, I love ketosis, I love ketogenic, mm -hmm. but I've also seen clinically like there's just people that don't res like they can't adapt, they like struggle, and I feel yeah. like the liver bile ducts that issue. So, yeah. if you look at the liver, right yeah. about here. Right there, yeah. Phase one, phase two detox, and there's something called phase three yeah. detox, which it really should be referred to as drainage. Yeah. So after the liver processes your phase one, phase two chemicals, mm -hmm. then it gets dumped a lot, most of those into the bile. Okay, yeah. Into the bile, yep. and then it'll store in the gallbladder yep. if you still have that gallbladder sac. So that, let's say we're going to go eat lunch or eat dinner, yeah. we start chewing our food, our body's like, there's food coming down the pipeline, or we, we're just thinking about food, our stomach's gonna increase stomach acid. Yeah. So that when we eat, there's more stomach acid, breaks it down. Once it's there for a little bit, and it's broken down enough, it'll release it into the small intestine. Mm -hmm. Well, the acid is so acidic, it's gonna burn yeah. holes in your intestine. Right. So the bile is super alkaline yes. to neutralize <clears throat> that. Right. So in the functional medicine world, I see so often like, you know, take betaine HCL mm -hmm. or, you know, um, drink apple cider vinegar before a meal to prime your stomach yeah. to increase the stomach acid. But from what I see clinically, I'm like, let's go one more step farther and let's actually get the bile duct moving Yeah. because here's what happens. You get toxins dumped into the bile duct pathogens, specifically parasites, liver flukes, giardia, strongyloides, which is a m massive epidemic. For, for those lis for you listening, if you have, if you work out and all of a sudden it's like massive fatigue, muscle soreness, you want to look at strongyloides parasite. But so you have these bugs and you have these toxins and they clog up the liver bile duct mm. so that when you release food and stomach acid, not enough bile can get out to neutralize it. So then the body's like, I've got too much stomach acid, so I'm going to decrease the stomach acid. And I believe that the decrease of stomach acid a lot of times is the bile movement. So if we increase the bile movement, now we can actually improve the whole GI digestive tract because now we're, our body's going to naturally increase stomach acid because it can actually neutralize it and not, you know, the acid doesn't burn per se, you know, 
holes there. So I believe the liver bile duct's really key for digestion that way, and then obviously lymphatic, lymphatic. So coffee enemas are amazing for the liver bile duct. Yeah. You can cat, so for, for those, you know, where you're like, I'm just, Dr. J, I'm not ready to go that far yet. Yeah. It's like, okay, that's fine, mm. it's fine. Um, castor oil packing. Mm -hmm. So you can take some castor oil, put it on your bare skin, mm. um, put a, like a six inch by six inch, you know, cotton flannel cloth, yeah. you know, over that liver area. You can always put a little saran wrap if you want so you're not leaking all over and then put like a infrared heating pad. Mm. And the castor oil is gonna be very drawing. Yeah. So it's gonna bring mm -hmm. like, get movement. Again, mm -hmm. stagnation, we wanna right. improve. You know, we want to reduce yes. that. Yeah. Um, there's supplements, herbs like, um, excuse me, Nutramedics has uh, something called Berber, B-U-R, B-U-R, it's a liquid. Mm -hmm. Works great at brain mm -hmm. or uh, body drainage. Yeah. And then they have another one called Panella, P-I-N-E-L-L-A, that's brain drainage. So you want to take mm -hmm. those together. Yeah. Um, there's other things like milk thistle and dandelion root yeah. that I love. Like, so my wife, I don't drink coffee, my wife does, but it's yeah. funny because it's like 16 beans, so it's mm -hmm. like... It's like pretty, pretty like weak on the coffee yeah. scale. But what we'll do is we'll put 16 beans in there, you know, and it's organic shade grown, of right. course. But then we'll also put some milk thistle seed in there. Okay. Grind it up. Yeah. Steep it in a French press for 15 mm -hmm. minutes. And then that's our coffee drink, but it's got yeah. milk thistle, okay. you know, so we can be adding like these herbs in and milk thistle really helps to, helps the yeah. movement. Dandelion root will do that too. It actually mm -hmm. is really good for the kidneys too. How about ginger? Ginger's awesome. Yeah. Um, digestion, yes. you know, queasiness, nausea, good for right. sinuses. Yeah. There's so many just natural herbs and things yeah. in our food even that can help help our body. Yeah. So and and then not forget like unresolved anger mm. you'll hold in the liver. Mm. So it's good. You know, not everybody's ready to like consider the emotion side depending on where they're at in the journey, yeah. but emotions are important too. Yeah, and it, ultimately we got to address all of those things. Yep. So we get so a good action step. I mean, in, in American culture, we're really not using herbs. Most people have no idea what herbs we're using. Table salt, right? But we're not adding in easy things: carminative herbs, oregano, basil, thyme, right? Things that are going to support digestive juice production, yep. and they smell good and taste good, right? And then you can take it to the next level and do things like milk thistle, which is an easy to find supplement. You can get milk thistle supplements. It's harder to find the actual herb, but if you go to a herb store, um, obviously you can do that. Lemons and limes, right? Yep. Are you a fan of those? Oh like yeah. Squeezing them in water. Or oh, them on food? first thing in the morning. Yeah. Lots yes. of water, lemon. Exactly. That's you right. Open that whole drainage pathway. Mm. You yep. know, so if you're constipated or just the bowels are sluggish, yes. easy way. Oh yeah. Get a stool or like a squatty potty, get the legs yes. up, you know, I mean, yep. there's just simple, I'm a huge fan of super hydration, just mm. really flushing the system with water because it really opens up the drainage pathways, yep. you know? And so you just kind of flush things out. You flush out actually a lot of microbes when you do that, get those bowels moving, urinate out. You know, we got to pee and poop our way to good health, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, open up those elimination channels. And I love, I love water. The thing that I've recently really like, this is huge. Yeah. Structured water. Mm. So there's, there's two sides to the water. There's chemistry, which is all about filtration, mm -hmm. and they say removing things. You never really fully remove anything. You're always reducing, even if it's 99.999%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the chemistry, you know, like Mike Adams, the health yeah. rancher, is able to test chemistry-wise what's in the water. Right. But there's this whole other side of it that's all about the energetics of water. And there was an author, um, professor in Washington, uh, he wrote the book called The Fourth Phase of Water. Yeah. I'm blanking on his name right now. But he wrote The Fourth Phase of Water talking about how water holds energy, water holds memory, mm. you know, and there's people like Dr. Emoto that, you know, showed yeah. like, you know, prayer, love and gratitude versus like hate, anger, changed mo molecules of water too. Yeah. That's a little bit older, but really, oh, Gerald, Jared, Gerald Pollock, yeah. fourth phase of water. And what I found is dealing with, I love definitely filtration of water and reducing things in my water because yeah. it's like, I just, I don't want to drink tap water. Yeah. But ever since I really added in the energetic, like what we'd call really the physics of water too, to mm. structure, yeah. I feel like I'm not as thirsty all mm. the time. I don't feel yeah. as dehydrated. Yeah. And I just, I look at research and like analyze, you know, like how does that work? And you have like your cells and there's a certain, you know, tension of the water within the cells. You've got tension of water and tap water, mm. you know, and when you drink a lot of like tap water, to get the water in the cell, it, 
there's a there's a little bit of a difference in there where the like the the surface tension is a lot higher in tap water than it actually is with our cells. Well, as soon as you like structure the water, um, and, and I'm I'm a fan more of like you know vortexine or sacred geometry or like gems more than like electricity personally is where I'm at right now. Yeah. But when you structure water, all of a sudden you drop the surface tension of water closer to where our cells are. So then when we put water in our body, they're more likely to get in our cells. Mm -hmm. So I I'm you know I love water. You think yeah. it's so simple, but I'm I'm really I feel like that's kind of the next tier where we need to look even in the functional medicine world is like okay, so we've got the filtration down and reducing it. But what about this whole physics side of it? Mm, so, I mean, you know, kind of marrying, marrying those. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, ultimately, we're living organisms. We find out more and more about just the energetics of things. I mean, we didn't really know much about ketones 20 years ago, right? And so now... Never even heard of it. More and more research just how it impacts our genetics, yeah. how it downregulates inflammation in our brain, throughout our body, um, improves the mitochondrial density, the diversity allows our body to produce energy more effectively, we become more resilient, so it's, it's, it's incredible. And so let's say somebody is dealing with you know, these kind of issues with parasites um, or even Lyme, right? And they're listening and you know, they've heard you talk about, hey, we gotta remove toxic, toxins, we gotta look at, hey, does your house have mold? Yep. Um, you know, these are some things we talked about, a little bit about drainage, okay? What, um, what would you suggest as far as maybe some three action steps uh, beyond some of the things we've already talked about that they can take. And maybe I know you've been formulating some different supplements as well that, that have obviously been very, very helpful yeah. for people. So talk about a little bit about those too. Yeah, yeah, I haven't even mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about other people's stuff. Yeah. Um, really, I think it boils down to let's take some time and really look at all the pieces to our own puzzle. Yeah. Because that's a lot of times why we're listening. It's either a family mm -hmm. member or ourselves and put attention into drainage yeah. no matter where you're at in your journey like improve drainage mm -hmm. always feel better yeah. and that's really the one hang up i have about ketosis where people react yeah if you try to go into ketosis with a lot of the fats that have to be processed by the liver yeah. you know where ketones bypass that i mean right. ketones are like a safe, easy way. So if you're eating a lot of long chain fats, yes. right? So a lot of animal fats, a lot of olive oil, olives, all things that, you know, avocados, things that are healthy. Yep. But if you're doing a lot of that and your drainage pathways are blocked. You're going to react. Right. You're going to react. And that's this is where, key for people to know. Oh, right? this is, this is, I feel like the missing link within the keto type world is we got to open up the drainage so that the bile can flow to help emulsify and break down that fat. Yeah. And ketones bypass all this, so it's a real easy way, yeah. like if your drainage isn't open, just, you know, like MCT and ketones and, yeah. you know, exogenous yeah. ketones. So you do MCT oil or exogenous ketones or fast, your body will start to produce those ketones um, and that you don't need the bile for. But if you're eating healthy foods, right, that, you know, every health expert will, you know, pretty much will tell you, hey, eat avocados and things like that, that could be a little bit stressful on that that liver gall that liver yep. bile duct, and normally we should be able to pump out and produce the right amount of bile to metabolize it and break it down and get the nutrients from it. But if you've got that drainage pathway blocked, you're going to have issues. So I'll yep. let you take it from there. Yeah. So let's focus on drainage. I would say that's yeah. step number one. Parasite. I mean, parasite cleansing is foundation. Mm -hmm. And what I find so often is we understand what we need to do most of the time, but we do it in the wrong order. We try to kill Lyme or we try to detox first. And it's like, well, don't detox chemicals out if your drainage pathways are clogged because you're going to yeah. react, you're going to get sensitive. Mm. So it's all about drainage and parasites. And why I say parasites right away, I mean, this is coming from a guy that I, I viewed myself as a pretty healthy guy. Yeah. And when I met um, my good friend and co-founder of Microbe Formulas, Dr. Todd Watts, he started showing me pictures of what people were getting out. Mm. I'm like, what are those things? <laughs> and I'm like, I want to do that. Like, you know, so he, he sent me some Mosaputica seed and within 17 days, mm. I had two 20 inch roundworms coming out wow. of my body. Mm. 20 inch. 20 inch roundworms. And I'm like, wait a minute. If I'm a oh relatively goodness. pretty healthy guy and I have these things coming out, who else does? Yeah. I immediately implemented it with clients and it was like, 
I can't think of anything other than like heaven's doors opening, which is not a good, but like just boom, like lights on for people, huge changes. Mm -hmm. And, and here's, here's the piece of it. Parasites can actually keep you mold toxic because the mold spores are living in there. Yeah. So we've got parasites that really holds you back from fully healing of mold. And then the other, one of the other pieces to it is parasites are sponges for heavy metals. And there's metals in our environment everywhere. Like we share one atmosphere. So what happens in China, we get affected at some degree. Yeah. And the reason why I believe there's such a big epidemic right now of parasite infection, not only in the United States, a first world country, but across the world is because of this toxicity mm. is creating an environment for the parasite to be there. So backing up how that works, let's say you're exposed to heavy metals, right? You have heavy metals in your body. Your body's more likely to leave the parasites there because they're sponges and they're, they're, they're basically sucking the heavy metals in to protect your body from the heavy metals. But now we get the downside of the parasite. So in order to fully detox too, we have to clear parasites out because they're holding on to a bunch of stuff. They're holding on to reservoirs. So we don't never want to like start first with detox. We always want to begin clearing parasites out because they're sponges for heavy metals. So we've got mold spores that live in parasites. We've got heavy metals that are in parasites. And the last piece is Dr. Alan McDonald, researcher in the Lyme world, has found that Lyme disease, the Borrelia bacteria, lives inside of parasites like nematodes. Wow. So if you're going after, you know, you're trying to kill Lyme, you're pounding the, you know, high dose, long-term antibiotics, and you're like, I just, anytime I stop, I don't feel good. It's like, well, because there's probably something protecting Lyme. Heavy metals protect Lyme, parasites will protect Lyme. Mm -hmm. So we want to take down parasites first because it's really intricate in getting well of mold. It's really intricate to get into the depths of heavy metal detoxing and it's really important in the Lyme disease world. Mm. And then the other thing is when there's parasites, it also can clog up the drainage. So drainage and parasites I think are number one and two and then that like unlocks and it makes any protocol beyond that so much easier. Yeah. And then the third, you're asking three things. I think the third thing is, is simply, simply food. Mm -hmm. Let's remove yeah. the processed stuff. Yeah. Let's remove the sugar. Like, I don't know what the hundred percent perfect diet is. I don't know if there is one probably depends on our blueprint and season and all that. But what I do know is sugar definitely increases inflammation yeah. and fake food, processed food, yeah. absolutely toxic to the body. Right. And, and I will say this with the food within that, I really believe bad fats mm -hmm. are the, the most, instead of going gluten free yeah. or even grain free. Mm -hmm. And I'm fans of both of those mm -hmm. things. I think we should go good fats only. Yeah. So any food, even if it's sold at a whole foods or a Trader Joe's yeah. and it's got canola, soybean right. or corn, corn oil, get, don't consume yeah. it. Because here's the thing, these bad fats clog up our lymphatic mm. system. And if our, if our lymphatic system's clogged, now we have stagnation, now we're more likely to get knocked down with chronic infection. Now we're more likely to not be able to recover, not have energy, again, because emotion is life. So within the food category, I think the most important thing, have good fats, coconut yeah. oil, avocado oil, uh, olive oil, right? You're I mean, speaking my language now. Yeah, fast. yeah. Yep. So, and, and I think those three yeah. would be my take home yes. foundation. And then all the other stuff you do beyond mm -hmm. that should just be easier. Yeah, okay, so what you're saying is, hey, if you're out there, number one, start working on those drainage pathways, right? Drinking lots of water, hydrating your body well, using herbs, uh, coffee enemas, right? Yep. Castor oil packs, we discussed that. Open up those drainage pathways, number sleep. two. Yeah, sleep, <laughs> that's right. Drain the brain, exactly, yes, yep. yep. Uh, number two, parasites. Start to address parasites. Yep. And you're the go-to man when it comes to that. And uh, I know you got a, a company, Microbe Formulas, right? That people can find you with. And, um, and then number three, um, change the food, right? Get rid of, and this is what the Keto Edge Summit, oh, we've talked a lot about this, get rid of the bad fats, get rid of the, the processed foods, the sugars, start really focusing on healthy fats. They make up the outer membrane of every, every cell of our body. They help form our hormones, our body can turn them into ketones, right? So yep. yeah, so great foundation right there. Yeah, you can't, 
I don't believe you should try to out supplement a bad diet. Yes. It's like change. Yeah. Food. Address yeah. Address the food first. Yes. And then supplements just add and yeah. and enhance. You know. Yep. Absolutely. And so. Jay, this has been an awesome interview and you've really brought a new insight into what's going on, just your philosophy on parasites, heavy metals, all these types of things. We haven't heard it in the summit. So I just want to really acknowledge you for bringing this clinical insight that came through suffering, um, watching your wife and uh, working with you know thousands of, of different clients over the years has given you just a very unique insight on how the body works. And I just really appreciate you sharing that with our audience. Yeah, it's yeah, been a pleasure. Definitely. And uh, let, let our audience know more about where they can find you and the work that you're doing. Yeah, the best place is just um, my main website, drjdavidson.com. So doctor is D-R and then J is J-A-Y and then Davidson, like Harley, but unfortunately no relationship to that family. <laughs> Otherwise, probably wouldn't be doing this, but yeah, drjdavidson.com. And then, uh, yeah, like the supplements, you know, the parasite yeah. detox stuff is uh, microbeformulas.com. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Jay. And if you, the listener, have gotten value out of this interview and the other interviews that we've had on the Keto Edge Summit, then I just want to encourage you to consider owning the entire Keto Edge Summit for yourself. That way you have access to the transcripts, the videos, everything for a lifetime, all the bonuses that we have. You can comb through it, go through it at whatever pace that you want. You'll be able to share it with your friends, your family members, and I really put this information into action because I know that it's going to empower your brain, your body, and help you really take your life to the next level. And so if you would consider doing that, we would be so honored and so blessed. And we'll see you in the future.